Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in downtown Decatur at the Madden Arts Center. And it's the beginning of an exhibit here today, but it's kind of a homecoming for the young man whose work this exhibit consists of. Seth Castile grew up here in Decatur. He went to, I think it was Eisenhower High School, Seth, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he's back home now after a kind of a worldwide journey of touring for a new book that he's produced. He's been photographing pets for maybe five years or so, but he's found something that really hits people. And we're gonna take a look at your exhibit here today, Seth. First, is it great to be back in Decatur with this on the wall? Oh, of I mean, course. This I mean, this is, uh, I love Decatur. I grew up here. I went to Eisenhower High School. Uh, and I come back here. My parents still live here. I'm back here five times, six times a year. Uh, I love it, I support Decatur. And for me, I guess right now, to walk into this gallery for the first time and see these pictures is kind of a surreal feeling because I really fell in love with dogs here in Decatur. This is where mm -hmm. my, kind of my uh, passion for dogs began with a little dachshund called Duchess mm -hmm. when I was just a little, a little kid. We were, we were best <laughs> friends, Duchess and I. And so now I'm back here in Decatur and I've got these photographs of dogs on the wall, including a dachshund. So, it's good to be home. You know, you really hit a sensational chord with people. I think back starting in maybe around February, and your underwater dogs hit the internet and went viral, and people have been talking about this ever since. In fact, you've been hit the interview circuit, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. You've been pretty famous. Where have you been? <laughs> well, it depends on who you ask about the famous thing. <laughs> I've been all over the place. Since the pictures became popular in February, it, literally, my career changed overnight. I was a guy sort of struggling to, you know, pay his bills, but mm -hmm. still loving life. And, uh, you know, certainly work has improved and my financial situation has improved and I'm having a lot more fun. Uh, but literally on Terrific. February 10th, boom, everything changed. Uh, hundreds of millions of people. Uh, I'm told something like 400 million people have seen these photos around the world. Mm -hmm. I can't really understand what that means. That's a lot of people. Uh, and that happens so quickly, you know, and I'm just, it's all overwhelming for me. Well, good morning, America took, America took notice. You, you were on yeah. that program. You were on Inside Edition. You were on uh, uh, today, uh, uh, t -t -t today, what's, what's the, t the Today Show? Today Show, The Insider. <laughs> and then, you know, last week, I think most major media outlets here in the States ran the shots from CNN, ABC, CBS, Wired, New York Times. Uh, Huffington Post. I mean, I, I don't even know. It's really, I feel like I'm living in a dream right now. <laughs> well, let's take a look at some of the work first, and then we'll continue the dream a little bit later. Cool. I mentioned you've been, you've been shooting, pet, not shooting, photographing animals for a long time. Yeah. But you really got an idea and a little brainstorm with this little, I, I don't know what he is, spaniel or what this little critter over here is. Let's yeah. take a look at this guy, number, this number is, one. I'm going to move on this side so we can get a good look at it. Sure, yeah, this is Buster, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. <laughs> and this is the dog that inspired the entire series that you see here, Underwater Dogs. Um, we were doing a little on-land photo shoot in California, and I was hired to document Buster and his personality. Mm -hmm. and through a series of photographs, well, little Buster decided he would just jump in the pool over and over again. <laughs> and at first his owner said, oh gosh, you know, I want to get some nice on land photos of Buster, but certainly Buster would rather be in the pool. And I had seen dogs jump in a pool before or in the ocean or a lake, but never like this dog. And this dog would jump in after a little tennis ball and he was just playing by himself, just chasing the tennis ball. He'd knock it in, he would jump in at it and he would submerge his face like this. And I didn't have an underwater camera with me. And I thought, oh my gosh, what's he look like? And I always want to tell the story of the dog that I'm working with. I want to show their uh, personality in my series of photos. And I thought, you know, this is maybe the way to do it. Left by a little point and shoot underwater camera, came back. Jumped in and did a few snapshots of Buster, and this is the beginning. This is about two years ago. You were able, of course, to look right, to see the product and your work right away. You, right got, away. you got to look at it and said, this is going to work. Huh? Yeah. I said, wow. You know, and I guess, I mean, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know, what exactly do I have here? I mean, I can mm -hmm. see that it's interesting, and I, I get back home and I really start to look at the pictures, and I'm like, what's going on here? You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, I got to pursue this more. Um, 
And so I did. It's a whole new dimension. Let's work our way down to, to Mr. Beefy here. Yeah, Mr. Beefy. An old English bulldog. Now, it, it does, it gives, a, it gives a, a dog's face a whole different texture because the, the resistance of that water pushes all the folds back yeah. and you get a look back. You wouldn't get any other way, don't you? This is Mr. Beefy's first time underwater, <laughs> which is exciting for him and I think exciting for us to watch, <laughs> watch this moment. <laughs> and, you know, this is in a pool uh, in Chicago, a hydrotherapy pool. Uh, designed for dogs to sort of recover from injury oh. or to get recreation, maybe if they're uh, if they're senior dogs. Uh -huh. Well, this is great. This is actually taken in January in Chicago. It's a heated pool. Mm -hmm. Beefy came out. Beefy's uh, owners decided to hire me to see if we could get some shots. And he'd been swimming a little bit, but he'd never been underwater, and he had such a fantastic attitude. Uh, <laughs> he's just, he's, what's happening here is I'm using a little tennis ball to get his attention. We're playing fetch in the pool, and he sort of loses track of the yellow tennis ball and he starts looking directly at my yellow camera housing. So that's why he's looking straight at us, is oh, he, might, okay. he might think that we're actually the tennis he ball. He thinks you're the tennis ball. Okay. <laughs> now this little, this little girl up here, she kind of started things for you. I remember seeing this in National Geographic. And I'll yeah. never forget it because she has this angelic look on her face and, it, and it's almost like she's surrounded with an aura of like she's in heaven or something, you know? Yeah, little Lulu, um, she's here in Arizona and I did the shot for National Geographic. I actually shot this back in February. They had asked me to go out and, and shoot some photos to see if they may be able to publish one in the magazine. And this is the shot that eventually came to be. Uh, oh. And she's one of my favorites. I mean, for a Jack Russell Terrier to do this is quite remarkable. She dives down five, six, seven feet to the bottom of the pool over and over again. And they don't care for that naturally, huh? They don't, yeah, they don't go in the water that much. You know, huh? it's hard to say. I mean, I've seen some swimming Jack Russell Terriers, but in terms of diving, I think this is probably pretty unusual. Mm, okay. I've only seen this particular Jack Russell dive. Um, and I'm sure there's more out there now, but yeah, she's one of my favorites and I love it. She, what I like about this shot is she almost looks like she really belongs here. You know, mm -hmm. she looks like she's at, at peace here. She and really does. This is her favorite thing to do in the world is to be <laughs> here in this pool chasing this ring. And she'll go after tennis balls, but she loves these rings. And that's all she wants to do. Speaking that's of it. tennis balls, now we get a real dichotomy here because this guy down here, it does not look like he's having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty powerful. This is a powerful shot. Some kids I've met actually think this is funny. Mm -hmm. um, some adults that I talk to think this is very terrifying. I am definitely leaning more towards the primal, uh, mm -hmm. the primal look on this shot. And what I love about, you know, you see the dichotomy. You see this sort of peaceful, tranquil photograph, and then you see something that's so primal. Mm -hmm. And what I like about this shot is dogs are unpredictable in general. They're unpredictable in the water. They have a range of emotions, which is probably just as fantastic as human beings. And I love to see this because this is showing another side of what dogs can be like underwater. There's no aggression here towards me. Uh, this is a super friendly dog. You look at the on land shot and you look at this, you're like, wow. But what I like about this is ultimately we've created dogs from wolves. Mm -hmm. We've given them a reason to become dogs and we've built dogs as we know today. But secretly, somewhere within modern day dogs, I think is a bit of a wild side. Mm -hmm. And I think this is maybe what we're seeing here. Mm -hmm. That's just my interpretation. Of and it. dogs, to me, I'm a dog owner too. Dogs are so involved in what they're doing at that moment that they're not thinking about what people think of them. Yeah. So this is what you're getting is a moment, this a is, real frank moment, moment, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm close here. I mean, I must be probably eight inches away. My camera's eight inches away from, oh, that's terrific. from this dog. Um, but really nice dog, though. Now, you love the tennis balls. They work for dogs, don't they? Because they'll go almost anywhere for a tennis There's ball. There's a I universal, uh, I think, idea of a tennis ball and dogs. And the whole <laughs> idea of fetch and the connection between uh, a, a tennis ball and a dog. And then even factor in a, a human being and a dog and a tennis ball. And there's that connection there. I've used other toys as well, sometimes treats, but I really feel like the tennis ball uh, has an impact with people. You connect with that. You get it. What's happening? The dog wants that. There's other weird, crazy dog toys, and you're not really sure yeah. what they are. But <laughs> I do feel like, in general, that object, just that shape, and even the size, is something that the dogs really react mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's partially because of us um, introducing them to a ball. Yeah, when they were real, when they're real small. Yeah, rolls. They chase it. Um, this is Bardo. You used Bardo, the yellow lab, in a number of, of shoots, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I've worked with her a bunch of times. She is just a pop still. She's just about a year old. Wow. She dives. She dives down nine, ten feet to wow. the bottom. 
I mean, it's remarkable when you see her do it for the first time. To get her vertical and like that. And you're like, wow. Didn't, and this, this didn't, is... When you knew you had that, was a hoot. <laughs> you knew you got it, too, didn't you, when you got it? She's almost straight up and down. The lighting happened to be really good that day. Mm -hmm. You know, we, the light was just low enough where we could kind of have her backlit. And this is tough because you can't really predict where the dogs are going to be exactly. The lighting is always changing. There's so many variables. So to end up with a shot like this, Mm -hmm. It's really special, you know, and I'm probably <laughs> maybe six feet at the bottom here and I'm weighted down with a weight belt mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm kind of waiting down there and then I lured her down and she's coming down. So I'm at some weird angle, yeah, you know, laying yeah. low with my weights and kind of shooting up like this at her, but she's one of my favorites oh, also. Man, that really worked. Now this, I like this. You didn't, you didn't have to use a ball in this one. You've got an uh, English pointer here yeah. and it looks like this dog's just sort of languishing around the, the surface of the water. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, he's just investigating below the surface and, or under the surface as I call the picture. And this dog is actually a pretty anxious dog in general. He comes from um, a broken place, he was rescued. He has uh, a much happier home now. He has a loving family. But overall, I think he's a little anxious about life, about new situations. Mm -hmm. He came out, we met Victor. He had not really been swimming too much before. We became pals, we let him settle in. He became more confident. We got him in. It's all about kind of reading the dogs and having that relationship. Because I don't ever want to work with a dog that doesn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. And we sort of convinced him that it was going to be fun. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time, again, he's put his face under the water before. I think for him is a big milestone, you know. For a dog that typically would have anxiety, he comes in, he conquers it, he becomes confident and happy and he creates this picture. And it takes patience on your part a lot of times, doesn't it? You yeah, sort of you, have to let things happen. Yeah, you've got to know, you got to read each dog, you have to feel out what's possible, what's not, and you can tell with this dog, okay, I got to figure out a way to, to keep this dog happy yeah. again. And ultimately, if, you know, if a dog's not happy about being there, we'll go do an on-land shoot. You know, we'll go do something else. But this is a dog that I'm really proud of, so I'm really glad he's a part of the series. This is ferocious, too. I mean, sometimes <laughs> you get these big old English bulldogs with this huge maw, yeah. and look at the way the water just opens that thing up. It's almost like it's a deep sea creature, huh? Yeah, yeah, this is Coraline. This is in Orlando, Florida, uh, just a few months ago. I went down, I photographed 20 dogs in this pool that day. <laughs> and Coraline, I think, was the strongest swimmer and diver. People say, oh, bulldogs can't swim, you know? Hmm. Um, some people would tell me that, and I said, I don't know what bulldogs you're hanging out with. But certainly, I've met bulldogs that are amazing swimmers. I've met bulldogs that are better swimmers than, lab, than labs I know. I'll be darned. Yeah. I mean, of course, with any dog, you got to make sure your dog actually is a confident swimmer if they're not used to it. Safety is always number one. But this bulldog um, not only loves to swim, but is extremely fantastic at it. Well, he's the only one in the pool, too, because if you're not going to get into a pool with yeah. that, are you? <laughs> except you. You're the only one who's not enough to get in the yeah, pool. Yeah, but she's, I mean, she'll swim for 20 minutes, and she chooses to get out on her own. And she's a bulldog, and she does this, and it's amazing to watch. Oh. And she'll dive down underwater. You know, it's funny to see her on land picture, and you see her underwater picture. You see the contrast oh. of those two things. But she's also a really sweetheart. But in this, you couldn't really even tell it's a dog, actually. I know. I know. <laughs> and this is hilarious. Look at the look on this guy's face, Rex. This is, this is Rex the boxer. <laughs> you know what? On the way out to do this photo shoot, this is out in Lake Havasu City. I was, I was in Phoenix, and I had to drive a couple hours out there. I was so excited to get to this photo shoot. I got two speeding tickets in one hour. I almost went to jail to get this shot. I mean, so I felt, the boxer, huh? Yeah, I was driving a little too fast. I got pulled over, and then I was driving a little too fast again because I knew this dog was going to be really special. Oh, he is. And he is. It, again, when you see this dog in person and you see what this dog can do in the water, I mean, wow. But he doesn't like a tennis ball. Nope. Oh, he only likes this, okay. like, rocket thing that you shoot it through the water and he chases it and he's extremely powerful he'll jump up like this and then he dives down in the water like that and he'll i'll be laying at the bottom of the pool and i'll kind of tempt him with this toy he'll come down he'll dive down at you and he'll just stop and look at you and he'll grab the toy and then come back up i he mean it's learn. a little bit creepy he does <laughs> he's got awesome he's got an underwater creature somewhere inside him he, he's amazing i mean this is a fish dog i mean i can't you know he has his pool at his house he swims every day mm -hmm. he grew up with it he loves it he knows it and it's just his way to have fun so. let's take a look at one more before we take a little break here and talk a little bit more about your career this is the the biggest print in the <laughs> exhibit for sure and it, it kind of well it, it should be because it's just it's it's remarkable isn't it this is Duchess the Black Lab taken in Chicago last January um, you know a couple things with this picture it's it's become the iconic <laughs> shot of the series it's been my favorite overall and it's become the favorite of I guess the people that have seen the series. Mm -hmm. The book folks decided they wanted to put this on the cover of the book. 
Um, I mean, it's really become probably the shot of my career. And what's special about it is a couple of things. Uh, I met this dog after two minutes of working with this dog in the pool, we had this photo. It, it happened wow. very quickly, very naturally. Mm -hmm. The other really interesting thing for me is, um, I grew up with a dog called Duchess, the little miniature dachshund that inspired my love for dogs, my love for animals. And I'd never met another dog called Duchess. And I've photographed tens, <laughs> probably tens of thousands of dogs. Never met another dog called Duchess, strangely, until this day. In walks this dog mm -hmm. called Duchess. I said, oh my gosh, I had a dog called Duchess. I love the name Duchess. I had this little dachshund. And then there was just something special happening with this photo shoot, and this is the photo that happened very naturally. So I wonder, you know, I mean, the, the connection with Duchess, is there something there? Is there something, mm -hmm. something that I'm not seeing? Maybe, maybe my little miniature dachshund is just saying hello <laughs> from afar. I don't know, but it is, yeah. it's absolutely strange to me that this is the only other Duchess I've ever met. And then this is the photo that becomes Sort the of the iconic, the yeah. the iconic so I, I love this shot, I love this dog, really sweetheart, and it's great to see this picture here in Decatur, too. And if my uh, little miniature dogs and Duchess was still around, I think she'd like this shot. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, we were talking about all the exposure that you have gotten recently, and I'm looking at the New York Times magazine, which comes out in the, in the, uh, in the weekend New York Times, and you're even, you're even in there. there. There are millions and millions of people that read this every weekend, and they've got you in here in your, in your salmon shoots up in Alaska. Yeah, yeah. Terrific. This is, this is one of the really exciting, uh, I guess, results of what's happened with my underwater dog photos. New York Times saw that series, and they said, hey, we want to we wanna hire you to do an assignment. What do you think? Wow. I said, okay. Oh, let's no do it. Kidding, so they no send kidding. me to Alaska. <laughs> they, pay me, they pay for me to go there and pay me. I go to Alaska for three days. My goal is to tell the story of the migration and spotting of sockeye salmon in Cooper Landing, Alaska. Russian River Rupper Kenai, photographing fish underwater, their end of their life cycle, and also the beginning. Uh, and also all the other animals that come along with that, including grizzly mm -hmm, bears. So mm -hmm. that was probably one of the highlights of my life, is being oh, able sure. to do that and then get these photos. And I mean, I just, I'm in love with Alaska now. I want to go back every year. I mean, I would consider moving there. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can, you know, you might toss them the idea that they need to send you up there for an, another time of yeah, year, you know. Exactly. Um, now, we're, we're in the corner of the, uh, uh, of the gallery here where some of your former work before the underwater dogs became famous. And, and you've been, like I say, you've been photographing animals for some time. And, and these are really different. They're black and white, but they still show that you 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 hunger to show the personality of the animals i think is what is what i see anyway and this three amigos is priceless these three little guys even though you can't see their faces you can kind of <laughs> tell what's going on here yeah this is a, a shot i did for a client they hired me to photograph their three little chihuahua rescue chihuahua friends and they're <laughs> extremely unpredictable dogs and they run around and around and around and they're a little pack these mm -hmm. little dogs are we went to a park I was finding it was tough. They wanted to have a shot of the three of them together, and I suggested that we, we do that as well. Oh, that would be really special. How are we ever gonna do that? It's insane, the dogs are running around. <laughs> so I'm like, I think we need to tell their story. We need to have them together as much as we can, and this has kind of become my favorite photo from that shoot, and also the owner's favorite photo, and maybe the dog's favorite photo yeah, also. Yeah. But what we did with this is, um, I actually put them in an elevated position um, where they could still jump down, but they were a little bit, you know, they were elevated off the ground. I, I backlit them, I underexposed and shot several stops, and I was able to get their attention with a telephoto lens from maybe about uh, 30 meters away, and we got this shot. And I think for me, if you ever meet these dogs, certainly for the owners, they know this, is this represents their dogs. Probably better than individual shots, better than even shots of them where you see their faces because they kind of have this little pack thing going on, yeah. and they're this little gang together, yeah. and they all love each other, and they're a team. And I think this represents that. Mm -hmm. It sure does. This is, this is great, too, because, you know, it doesn't matter whether this guy is a good, good musician or a bad musician. <laughs> this dog loves his music. <laughs> this is in New York, and this just happened. You know, you're walking around New York, and walking around New York, you see some incredible things. And I happen to be down there with my camera, and this is a guy playing a saxophone for tips, and here's this dog here, <laughs> just, just listening in. And it really did seem like the dog loves yeah. The music. And if the dog had any money, he'd have thrown in that <laughs> yeah. hat. You know, he surely would have. <laughs> exactly. Let's look over here. Look at this, uh, look at this big guy Can I show here. you this one real quick? Oh, sure. This one. Sure. This is one of my favorites. This was done, uh, I only photographed this dog for probably 10 seconds. And this is in a park in Chicago after a big blizzard about two years ago. Um, and during that day, the temperature was 16 degrees. I call it that. 
But what I like about this shot, it's freezing out. There's a blizzard that just happened, and this dog and the dog's owner are out playing fetch, having a good time, and it, it's freezing out. Mm -hmm. And this dog is just having so much fun. You know, no worries. And you see, you know, the breath, it's backlit, and, you know, the dog is just having a blast to see mm -hmm. the smile. And I just think this is a powerful moment. And I, I joke with people, I say, it's, sometimes it's tough for me to do a lot of work in Chicago in the winter because not a lot of people want to be outside that much. But right. this is something that you certainly can't do in Los Angeles. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. You'd never get the effect, would you? Yeah. And this, this actually took first place in the AKC uh, photo contest for this past year. So I think there's... Congratulations. I don't know, thousands of entries, and they, yeah. they picked this one. But I, I think this is a really special picture. I don't even know who this dog is. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. But I, I like the dog. You've though. made each other famous, though. <laughs> <laughs> I like this dog, this Afghan. Um, because I just look at her or his eyes, I can't tell, but I just look it's at that. He. And he just has so much personality. <laughs> I am drawn to this shot. I'll tell you a quick story about this photograph. I was waiting at a park in New York uh, on the Upper East Side, waiting for another client. Along comes this dog and this dog's owner. And this dog's called Ayeya, Afghan hound. At this time, the dog was just about a year old. And I said, hey, can I meet your dog? Do you mind if I take a couple of pictures real quick? He said, sure. Mm -hmm. I had maybe 30 seconds to work with this dog, and they went on their way. And this is one of the resulting photos. For me, has just been my, probably my favorite photo I've ever done, e even maybe more than you know, the barking bubble shot for the book mm -hmm. cover. Because I think I call this the emotion of dogs because I'm passionate about the emotion of dogs. That's my whole life, is I'm really interested in the emotion of dogs and how similar that emotion is the emotional capacity of human beings, mm -hmm. how we're really not that different. This is a photograph I can never really figure out what's happening here. You know, I think this is such a complex emotion with this dog. I especially like also that I don't even know this dog. The dog doesn't know mm -hmm. me, yet we have this moment here, this moment in time, and it represents, for me, the emotion of dogs. I also have uh, a giant tattoo of this same picture on my arm. Is that right? <laughs> my, really? My parents were like, wait a second. <laughs> you can Boy, carry it away. You can carry it away. <laughs> you don't even know this dog. I said, I don't have to. I said, this represents something bigger than just. I love this dog. And yeah. I, I've seen this dog since, and I love this dog, but this, for me, represents dogs in general and not just mm -hmm. the specific mm -hmm. Afghan hound. Well, you know, somebody probably feels the same way about this little guy here. <laughs> Hanging out. I mean, Hanging this out. is the cutest thing you ever saw. <laughs> This is a little dachshund that oh, I met actually yeah. here in Illinois, oh, and man. this little dachshund's about uh, nine weeks old, and just had a fantastic level of confidence um, for his age, and we went around, and he just liked to play hide-and-seek and climb up the trees <laughs> and look around the shed, and really, I mean, we had a blast. There's actually, I don't know how many, but a whole bunch of photos from this photo shoot that turned out to be really a, a lot of fun, and this is just one of my favorites that I wanted to present here. But yeah, I mean, even at that age, you, you have this interesting expression. And some people would say he's smiling. Some people would say, you know, confident. Some people, who knows? Mm -hmm. But I who love knows? this little puppy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, on one of the walls here at the exhibit, we, we've got a look at, or at least a look at how you do some of the work you do. And you have specialized equipment, of course. Yeah. We're looking at a camera that has to be, I imagine that's a, a, a you, you can't do that with just any camera. You've got to have an underwater camera. You probably also have to have special kind of clothes because you're in Puget Sound in this picture, and it's <laughs> cold, right? It's pretty chilly yeah. in the water. Yeah, the, so the camera gear, it's actually an on-land camera. It's a Canon 7D, uh, and that's taken and it's placed into an underwater housing. I've used probably 10 different types of underwater housings. This housing here has been the main housing I use. The entire book basically was shot with this situation. It's designed for surf photographers. It's called a surf housing mm -hmm. from a company in San Diego. Um, it's meant to only go under maybe 10 feet at the most. B because uh, the pressure the that pressure. we build up? Yeah, so it's a shallow water housing. Mm -hmm. um, you can see here I have an over-under port. So it's a big bubble mm -hmm. that, that goes over the top and that protects my lens. It also allows me to do what's called over-under shot. So I'm allowed to see underneath the surface and above the surface. Oh, okay. The reason I use the surf housing also is it's much lighter than a scuba housing. I have a handle, I can also put a pistol grip. I can shoot through the water back and forth. A lot of the times when I'm working with dogs or fish or anything else, uh, it's important for me to be able to move very quickly. Right. So I use that. I don't have light, giant strobes on arms hanging around. I also use this flash here. This is an important part of it. I illuminate my subjects. And what's great about using this flash is I get recycle time of sometimes three, four, five 
six flashes a second. So wow. boom, 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 as opposed to a lot of strobes you can buy for scuba diving housings, mm -hmm. you may not get that recycle time. You may get one, and then you gotta wait, and then you get another flash. Yeah. So this is one of the secrets to me being able to create this is the gear helps me illuminate the subject. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you know, a lot of the pictures would just be dark. Oh, you, you lose so much light once you go underwater. It may look light down there, but yeah. once you get down there, it's not that way, it's, is it? It's true, yeah. yeah, it's so true. And so, yeah, that's the deal. And I keep it bright yellow because the dogs will react to it. Mm -hmm. Like a tennis ball. Yeah, <laughs> except the salmon, the, you know, I, the whole thing with the dogs is a tennis ball, but I definitely, I, I learned that salmon aren't interested in a tennis ball. <laughs> right. Hey, let's I figure that one out. This book, as, we, as you and I stand here in early November, this book has just come out a week, or, it's only been out a week or two ago. Uh -huh. And already, it's, Amazon has this listed on their bestseller list, I think, is that, if that's not right. Yeah. And the New York Times as well. New York Times bestseller, I wow. just got announced yesterday. I know, I can't even believe it. I'm like, what? <laughs> Isn't that um, something? So it's been, yeah, a real thrill. It just came out October 23rd. Sales have been really good. New York Times on the bestseller list. and. Yeah, I'm just ha having a blast with this thing. Also, we, we have to note, I mean, we, we know that you're a, a dog lover and, and you've, you've explained that, but you also have set up ways that, that shelters can benefit from what happens here at the gallery and also the purchase of your book, I think. Sure. Have you not? Yeah, you yeah. So we're donating uh, a portion of all proceeds to Homeward Bound and also the Macon County Shelter Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, every little bit helps. And that cause is sort of near and dear to my heart. Long story short, I got started photographing domestic pets through volunteer work out in California, helping homeless pets find new families through better pictures. Mm -hmm. So I launched a nonprofit called Second Chance. Now I travel around the world and do workshops to animal shelters, teaching staff and volunteers, hey, how to take a better picture so we can find this dog or cat a new home. It's so great. it's near and dear to my heart. I'm really happy that Homeward Bound and Macon County Shelter Foundation are a part of this too. And if we can help them with a little bit of a donation, yeah. I'd, I'm happy to. That's terrific. Thank you, Seth. Thanks. Rhoda, the Diving Dachshund and Other Dogs by Seth Castile can be viewed here at the Madden Art Center through November 26th. With another Illinois story in Decatur, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.